Hello, everybody. I am Shox here to cast another. Uh, I believe this is our 99th Brood War game, and we're gonna have Larva versus Jehun here on Circuit Breaker. And I'm here with Davu and Sonic. Davu, would you like to introduce yourself? Not especially, but I will. Uh, I'm a mathematician by day, a gamer by night, and a caster in the after evening. All right, and Sonic. And I've done this 99 times now. Uh, I'm pretty good at it. Well, this is your 99th. You've done it 98 times, and as a mathematician, I'm a little sad that you did not get that correct. Uh, Sonic, would you like to say something about yourself? I did no. one before. I you, you might guys. right now, Davu. I do mind. I was. I wasn't finished. I am yeah, Sonic go. here to go. cast the 99th game. I'm a gamer by day, gamer by night, um, and a caster in the evening. Uh, we're here to cast Larva versus Jehoon on Circuit Breaker, which is a ZBP. Yep, and we're going to see right away Jehoon's going to put that pile on his natural for the fast expand, and he is scouting the right way, so he's going to get a lucky first scout. Jehoon, I'm sorry, Larva is, uh, looks like he's going to be going probably overpool, yeah, overpool from Larva, so very standard play. What we're going to be looking for at Jehoon's natural is if he puts up a gateway or a forge. Gateway indicates he's going to pressure early. It's a nice probe rest here from Jehoon already through the minerals, that's pretty annoying. Looks like Jehun's actually just gonna go standard. Um, at this point, he's probably looking to add in a forge or a nexus. I don't think he's going to be aggroing with a gateway. Oh, well, we're about to find out. Yep, it's a forge. That's a good call. That forge was actually a little late. I think Jehun wanted to uh, consider making a nexus first. But he saw that the overpool is actually um, going to be done a lot quicker than he was actually prepared for. So he threw a forge out first. Yep, it is a forge. Uh, Larva is trying to get his hatchery up before he starts making lings. Does get the hatchery up. He's making just two, a pair of lings, so Jayhun's going to be completely fine. He's going to be able to get a cannon up. Now in this position as Zerg, would Larva take the 12 o'clock expansion? That might be a little difficult to defend, so usually Zergs would take the 1 o'clock expansion at this uh, stage. Uh, do you guys agree? Yeah, I think he'll take top right natural. Unless he's going for a really aggro Hydra build, in which case he might even take his own mineral only. But usually you want to hide that from... But actually... He's uh, getting his second, or he's getting his gas before his third hatchery, so that's a little bit unusual. Usually get that has hatchery faster, but nothing too crazy because he is going to take top right natural for his third base. Maybe he just favors actually getting a layer out a lot quicker and then having the, the spire uh, be ready to throw out a scourge in case Jehun actually goes early Corsairs. Definitely seems reasonable. There's some good scouting going on right now. That probe's still alive. Being able to see everything's going on. So the probe actually will see the early gas uh, being mined, as well as this layer that's pretty early. Uh, at this point, Jehun has no clue that Larva's taking a third. However, he can ins he can deduce as such, but that l uh, that layer is pretty early. He's gonna be able to. Wow, he keeps the probe alive? Is it gonna leave the base? That's pretty nice. If he can get this probe out, one hit and it dies. Two hits now, that's good. Well, maybe. Anyway, back in Jehun's main, we see the cores coming up and he's sending probes on gas. He took a really fast second gas, so uh, that's a little bit unusual, but again, that's, I guess I shouldn't say unusual. It's, it's not bad by any means. I think he has a probe at his natural that's not mining. Yeah, the probe on the rightmost mineral is not mining, so that's a that's an error on his part. I wonder if they were chatting in this game. I feel like there were a lot of things that were a little late by the proto. And uh, I think his nexus was a little late. He did that weird thing where he sent the probe back and then back up. So he should have done that. So Jehun go ahead and scouts the second natural over here. Uh, this isn't really going to change his style of play. He'll just be able to 
um, get a better understanding of what Zerg's doing. Uh, I think the early second gas actually will be a good indicator of a quicker plus one upgrade. However, I'm not seeing it get thrown up. We do see two zealots out on the map. One's already died. The second one going for Larva's yeah, natural. These are both miss micro a little bit. Yeah, that's gonna get picked off too. But nice, nice play by Larva to make the extra lanes to take, take care of it. He didn't really overproduce things. Uh, he made just enough to handle it. We do see a spire going up in Larva's main, but no second gas, so it's not like it's gonna be muted or anything crazy. It's just gonna be some scourge. Hey, wait, is this a uh, weapon upgrade normal in the cyber core? Okay, yeah, that's, so that's Jason... normal. Jehun's getting a quick plus one air upgrade, and this will allow him to uh, mass produce some sares so he can get that uh, that magical number of around six sares that he usually will aim to get. Um, but Larva already has a lair that's about to pop open, so he should be able to defend, at least in the early stage. Yeah, that Spire is indeed about to pop, so he's going to be fine. My guess is that Jehun's just going to play these Corsairs very conservatively. He's going to scout around a little bit, but he's going to send it back home, and he's going to get up to six, like you said, because six with plus one weapons, one shot's a Scourge. But actually, Larva is actually getting plus one Carapris for his Scourge, so that's a good development. Uh, we do see a fourth hatchery going down at Larva's third base and a fifth hatchery at his natural, so he's going to be going into mass hider production. But he is actually getting a sixth hatchery at his uh, now fourth base, so... I still think he's going Hydra, but there it might be more Lurker. And that's a bold move to be able to uh, get six hatcheries at this stage. He probably feels extremely safe at this point. Uh, knows that Jehun might be just spamming Sares at this point, and does not have a significant ground army. And it looks like he's going for the plus one uh, weapon upgrade. Um, However, he still is only sitting on two gateways. Yeah, he's actually going to be making Dark Templar. He just finished his Templar archives. So we have a Dark Templar coming out from the natural gateway right now. And that's going to give him some map presence as a, I don't believe, Overlord speed. It looks like it's about halfway done. So It'll also give him some pressure because he is uh, spamming these stairs. So they'll be able to do put up some pressure in some of these expansions if Larva actually chooses not to have uh, any spore available within these expansions. Yeah, the problem is he's going to have to wait a little bit for that those Corsairs to be ready. Otherwise, they're just going to get picked off by Scourge. So until then, the Overlords are going to are going to be alright to handle it. Hydra yeah, it looks is like a... looks Go. like he is getting a spore at the at the second natural, so he shouldn't have any problems with defending against these Dark Templars. Uh, the Dark Templars will be able to just keep Larva stuck in his base while Jehun actually creates a sizable ground army over here while he's taking his third. Yeah, that's a lurker being researched. It's a good play for Jehun to take the third now while he has map presence. Uh, I do want to note one thing. I've said that Larva was getting. Overlord speed, but he actually hasn't started it yet. That was actually plus one air defense, so... Uh, that could be a detriment, because if you don't have Overlord speed at this point, then you really cannot um, actually contest any of the map presence, so the Dark Templars will just be able to get a lot more value out of their uh, ability to just roam the map. Uh, I don't know if Larva really cares. I mean, he's just gonna macro up. It looks like he's putting down two more hatcheries in the uh, fourth base. We've got a great host right now. It's not lagging at all. <laughs> Larva is gonna of harass at the third. It's not gonna do much though. Yeah, he does pick off the probes. That's a nuisance, but nothing too big. Uh, Jehun's up 20 supply, which is pretty good for Protoss, but he's not gonna be able to attack any of these bases right now. So. He can't really do a whole lot with it. He does have his six Corsairs sitting outside the natural, and they are going to go in and try to pick off any overlords that they can. He does have plus one weapons. Uh, but he doesn't realize, I think, plus one Carapurse is done as well for, for Zerg. Yeah, yeah but he has eight are... Corsairs, so it doesn't actually... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's Larva not... does have lurkers actually out in the middle of the map. He's probably going to go to the third and try to just have it burrowed on top of the... Uh, the top platform. Uh, he won't be able to do much with them, but he can just 
um, securely try to harass this third right here while trying to take out that cannon. And this will give him a lot of, oh. Yeah, he's gonna get those lurkers behind the mineral line. That's very well done by Larva. He's, uh, Protoss isn't gonna be able to mine from that until his Robo's done, until he has OBS out. OBS out. I mean, he's, he's got an OBS building right now. He's got a shovel oh, building. Is. Now he's got an OBS, but still losing that mining time. Because remember, Larva's already on four bases. So that's, that's a really nice play from Larva. Larva's on eight hatcheries. That's very good for Zerg. And the longer Zerg actually can delay it, the more of a success it is, because Zerg is uh, teching up to... Once Zerg techs up to Cracklings, uh, having that mining time will be crucial for Protoss to be able to defend against it. Looks like he's just harassing around. I think the shuttle's him. about to get picked off. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. And in that yeah, shuttle arc, two Templar, high Templar that is, so he's going for a storm drop. It's going to run wider over these Zerglings. That's that's very unfortunate. Uh, what's also unfortunate is the game pausing, but... Alright, so the storm drop has been spotted. Larva should know what's up, but I think Jehun's still going to try to roll with it. It doesn't look like this storm will be able to do much how, uh, since Larva's actually aware of it. Uh, however, the High Templars are coming down, they're going to throw Oh, storm. nice storm! He was able to predict the fact that Larva would send his drones and was able to get around eight drones in that clip uh, within that storm. And now you could actually argue that that's Larva's fault because Larva was well aware that the storm would actually drop, so maybe he should have done it a little earlier. Yeah, he should have definitely ran away earlier. That was a nice pickup by Jehun, getting eight drones or so. That's very nice. Uh, that just hurts Larva just the tiniest bit, but it's enough to, you know, he has to rebuild those drones. And Lar uh, Jehun's looking for his fourth base now. The problem with this mineral only is that it obviously doesn't have a gas with it, and he needs another gas. So he's going to want to pick up that fourth base and then get out on the map with goons, observers, Templar and uh, get some map presence to stop Larva from taking a fifth base. And it wouldn't, I wouldn't really mind if Jehun throws down another uh, forge, especially when it gets to the late game. Protoss versus Zerg, a lot of the upgrades are crucial in this matchup. Jehun just Zerg found, is... sorry, Jehun just found a bunch of overlords in Larva's second, in Larva's natural, but they're on the run from these Scourge right now. Big oh, that was a nice dodge, I yeah. don't know if I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. That was a nice dodge from those Scourge. He literally just dove right They're about the to get intercepted right there. Still like five the... Corsairs, a respectable number. Looks like the Corsairs were safe. Um, they'll be able to help Jehun with the late game push uh, with his ground army. If he mixes in some of the de uh, like Dark Templars to uh, be able to counter you know, the Ultralis uh, or Cracklings later on. We just see Jehun getting out on the map with his goons. My guess is he's going to try to be aggro towards either the natural or the third from Larva and see if he can maybe pick off some buildings. You can kind of see how that hatchery, for example, is pretty exposed. Yeah, at this point, Larva is very secure in both of these expansions. Uh, Jehun can't really contest uh, anything aside from being able to just get map presence, keep them contained. Uh, he can harass what range goons over here on his uh, on Larva's natural. Uh, however, he won't be able to break through it at this moment. I mean, look how many sunken setters. This is like a sunken beacon. Yeah, he's definitely not breaking through that. But if he can just be annoying like this, pick off buildings with goons, that's very nice. Especially a hatchery. You don't want to lose a hatchery for nothing. Uh, up, oh. no, Larva is... Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was taking 3 o'clock, but it was actually just a bunch of units. So Larva's actually had his hive up for quite a bit. However, I don't see a Defiler Mount or an Ultralisk ever. So I'm curious, but he is making a Nidus Canal that is uh, his second natural, and that Nidus Canal will give him a lot more mobility, but I don't necessarily know what he... Looks like Larva's actually attacking the 9 o'clock expansion. Uh, this expansion will just be cancelled, so, and reinforcements will arrive. Yeah, that's gonna be denied. Good play by Larva to keep his opponent on basically three gases. 
So it looks like that Nidus Canal is being thrown down uh, between the second Naturals, and this will just give them some mobility to be able to defend in case one of the expansions gets attacked. However, at this point, uh, it looks like he is making a Defiler as well as two Defiler mounts in his main base. Um, I'm curious how that's... Uh, I'm curious if he's doing that to try to upgrade twice as fast, or if it's a mistake. It's definitely the upgrade twice as fast. What's the second upgrade would you even get out of that defiler? We do see some lings going for the 6 o'clock base, but he's got this more than more defended. I mean, he's got a Templar. He already has the energy upgrade, so he's going to have three storms in that Templar. He's got a handful of zealots there. That, that, that base is safe for now. I feel uh, I feel like Larva is doing a really good job defending. I mean, he Hold is... On. We got a mass drop four. coming in right now. Mass drop, 12 o'clock, four shuttles, and Corsair's moving in. He's going to drop right in Larva's main. Mass drop has a lot of Templars here ready to storm um, for any defense. It's going to be really hard for Larva to be able to defend this at, at a quick time, especially with his building placement. Unit are streaming in. Uh, Jehun is actually targeting the upgrades, the evolution mounts, and was able to stop one of the upgrades actually from being complete. Yeah, that, that drop, it could have gone a lot worse. He did kill some drones, he killed a lot of units, he got some buildings, he didn't get either of the Defiler mounds, but I think that's okay. Uh, he's losing Corsairs for free though, is Replay bugged or something? That Corsair just sat there, he lost some Corsairs, you don't want to do that late game. Oh, he got the point. Spire, he got the Evolution Chamber, stopped an upgrade. Yes, fire was also upgrading and it got cancelled, uh, or it got destroyed actually, uh, while it was being upgraded. And Jehun still has map control, um, and he's about to max out just again, so he's not too worried about losing that supply. However, um, he is harassing the top right expansion, um, however, he wasn't able to do much before uh, it got taken out. Um, 3 o'clock is also being harassed by a single zealot. Uh, it might actually take it out. He really should have waited uh, for that DT2 attack until the drones transfer there and then take them off. I think that was a blunder on his part. He attacked the hatchery for some reason and gave him the alert. Zella dies at 3 o'clock. Uh, a bunch of hydras go in there to fortify it. But actually, they're running away, and now Jaehyun's moving in with his goons. If he could pick off that base, that'd be very nice. And it's it's free for the right. It's right for the taking. It's just right there. So he's uh, just gonna <laughs> go kill it. You would think so. <laughs> at this point, I think uh, a few Zells chilling outside. That's about at it. this point, I think Jehun is really scared that Larva will counter uh, hit attack one of his bases. However, his bases are super secure with uh, at least 10 cannons on each wit, high Templars. Um, he is getting Reavers into the mix of his unit composition because it's starting to get to that point, that end game point where Zerg will be able to. Uh, chug out Ultralis as well as Swarm and Plague, uh, which will reap havoc on some of the, the ground units that Protoss usually has in his unit composition. Yeah, we're going to see Jehun attack this top left portion of uh, Larva's army. He's going to drop those Reavers, do some free shots on the Lurkers, Storms all over the Hydras. He's going to have some room to move in here. upgrades just finished too at the same time. That's the advantage to the pilot though. Just wanted to point that out. Yeah, the Fathers are going to be really good against this goon heavy army. They're going to be uh, very useful if he can get some good Dark Swarms up. Some Hydras moving down to the bottom right. I think they're going to go target these Zealots sitting down here. Kind of weird play, but Jehun's army is moving back up to the top right. He's going to drop these Reavers again and kill some uh, Lurkers. Nice pickoff. Kills two Lurkers with two Scarabs. Yes. That's absolutely huge because if. Jehun is able to push this army right here. That's the only thing that's defending uh, this expansion that's about to, uh, the mineral only expansion. And if Jehun could actually take out those two expansions, it's going to really limit Larva's economy. However, it doesn't look like he was going to commit to that break. And now he's at a stalemate at this point. He doesn't really have a secure foothold to be able to attack either the 11 o'clock position or the 12. 
uh, a clock position. So he's really just uh, biding his time at this point. Yeah, he lost the shuttle, so he kind of had to back off. I'm not too big of a fan of these Reavers kind of just walking across the map on their own, but that's fine. I think one of Larva or one of Jehun's big flaws here is his lack of observers on the map. He only sees this choke player top right. Oh, he is going to get these defiers though. He might get him picked off. Oh, a couple plagues do get off. Actually, Huge very good. Yeah, coming out. Uh, most of the plagues are getting on the zealots, which will actually really benefit Larva later on once Larva actually can produce zerglings with ultralis. Uh, that combination will just shred Protoss's army. However, Protoss is still very confused at this point. He doesn't actually uh, know where to attack at this point, while uh, while Larva is perfectly doing perfectly fine. Uh, he's gotten the 12 o'clock expansion, and now he's continuing to mass produce. Yep, Larva tries to move some Zerglings out at uh, top left, and they, that gets shut down. He's going to try to snipe the shuttle again with Scourge. Oh, here he's going to get it. Get it. Oh, oh, nice, Michael. Just, no, just it. he was able to save it. However, he does lose the Reaver within that tussle. However, it doesn't... I don't see Protoss actually having any progression at this point. He still seems a little lost as to what to do. And he's giving Larva plenty of time to be able to get into his end game and another fight's about to occur but your larva's going to attack he has about 10 lurkers uh, that's pushing jayhun back yeah jayhun's gonna back off but he's losing some archons don't really want to lose those i mean he is on Got the reavers on... out which is good and that's a nice score yeah you don't want to lose those archons though he's on four gas but you know it's, it's so gas heavy uh, he's gonna get he's gonna get flanked in a second. There's a bunch of users streaming in from above, and there's those defilers coming in from the east. A big a big battle is about to happen here. I'm pretty sure. Huge battle is about to occur here. I feel like Larva is also thinking far ahead because he he's also max supply over here, and he wants to uh, whittle that down so he could actually get his ultralis and uh, zerglings out. Huge battle going out with swarms being thrown down. Storm, really good storms occurring, and it's actually shutting down Zerg's army. Yeah, this is an amazing trade for Larva, though. He sniped so many units, and he's up 40 supply. He's going to get a plague all over the shuttles and the Reavers. Big plays from Larva right there. And he's still coming in with Hydras. I feel like um, there's just not enough gateways to reproduce fast enough. I mean, I'm, I see him with over 5,000 minerals. I, he's gas blocked, though. I think that's really uh, the exciting point here. Yeah, and that's a good point, considering Protoss is only sitting at like 11 gateways compared to uh, Larva's 10 hatcheries. That's just mass producing uh, units that are coming out in streams over here. Uh, it looks like Larva is trying to attack the 9 o'clock position with Storm and some Lurkers. However, he won't be able to break this just yet. Uh, however, he's consistently staying maxed out on supply count, uh, which actually gives Larva the advantage. Yeah, it's going to be a nightmare to break this. There's three Reavers sitting there, the Storm, there's cannons, although that's kind of the Dark Storm kind of negates that. He is getting in with Zerglings and breaking down some of these cannons, but. He's not going to be able to break this. Like, there's too much here. And Jayhun's really being stingy with his storms. He really doesn't want his storm unless he definitely has to. Uh, so these cannons are actually getting knocked down one by one. Well, he's going to make this push out in the middle. I, I think this is actually going to be the deciding fight right here. Yeah, big fight coming in. Lurkers are moving in on top of the army, yeah, and they're going to Every burrow. direction. Look at that mini map. Yeah, that's big time. That reminds me of, you know, July, July Zerg back in the day, his macro. Larva making good plays here. He's getting on top of the armor of Zealots, but there's too many Archons to do that. So Zerg gonna get shot down. Yeah, at this point, Jaehoon really needs another gas expansion just to oh. be able to... Oh, he gets both shuttles. I don't know if those had Reavers in them or not. Another oh, really man. beautiful plague actually comes out, throws it on a third of Jaehoon's army. Uh, at this point, Jehun really needs to try to secure another gas expansion. 
preferably the five o'clock position. However, he has to defend against Larva's central army in the center. Look at all that. Got another here. big army moving out. Yeah, this feels like one of those survive for 30 minutes now. Let's see if Toss can survive for 30 minutes. He's, what, 25 minutes in? Well, I don't know about you guys, but I do not think Toss is going to survive, and I think this might be it right here. we got a huge army moving forward. We have four Defilers, a bunch of Zerglings, although he's losing a lot of them for free to Storm, and there are a lot of Archons here. There definitely is a lot of Archons, though. A, another huge plague actually got thrown on the, basically half of Jehun's army. Uh, Larva still has no problems just reinforcing his entire stream of armies, and he's looking to attack again. This is a huge engage over here with cracklings that are maxed out on upgrades. Uh, storms are being thrown down, however, Protoss is really just struggling to maintain. Yeah, for the first time in a while, Protoss jumped ahead in supply, but it only lasted for a split second because Larva immediately took the lead again. I mean, that's what happens when Protoss only has like eight gateways in his main and just a couple spread around the map, but various naturals, but he's so gas blocked. He and I feel to... like Jaehoon's really lost at this point. Uh, he is just really trying to defend at this point, but this he needs to be a little more counter uh, aggressive in terms of what he's doing, because right now he's just defending. Um, however, how long can you really defend against the Zerg that has the entire map split? Well, the mission objective is he has to defend for 30 minutes. Uh, but I think this is going to be it right here. This is really nice surround. It looks like it's coming. Now, there's too many units. It's, it's, it's hard for Larva to actually kill this. But the problem for Jaehoon is that he's running out of minerals. He's running out of gas. And Larva understands that. He understands that uh, Jaehoon doesn't actually have the 5 o'clock expansions, and he also knows that Jaehoon's actually gonna run out of uh, expansions that he can um, take, and so he's going to attack the 3 o'clock expansion. However, Larva's just ready to defend over here. It looks like this might be it for Jaehoon's army. Uh, he can't defend against everything. Yeah, Jaehoon's army just got massacred. And he's gonna have to reproduce all of that. He lost everything but the shuttle, and now the shuttle's dead. And he only has two bases left, two mining bases. Right, the other three are completely mined out. Yeah, look how zealot. Oh, that's it. Yeah, GG. 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 That was a great game, a good demonstration of how Larva just uh, dominated him, a good demonstration of ZVP at a high level. That's how you want your Zergs. Yeah, and it was. It was games to it look was like. definitely. It was. It definitely showed uh, that Larva was a lot more comfortable playing that play style, especially on this map. And he wasn't. He wasn't really even pushing to get a high army count early. He just had a solid defense. J a solid defense to the point where Jaden had no clue what to do. He couldn't really attack the eleven o'clock, and then he couldn't attack the one o'clock. So he was really at a stalemate, and he looked lost the entire game. Yeah, that was rough for Jaehoon. But anyway, that wraps up uh, Larva versus Jaehoon. Now, as you may know, this was our 99th cast, which means our next one is our 100th cast. And we're going to bring I you guys... I cannot wait. We are going to bring you guys something special. It's going to be a surprise, so you're going to have to wait and see what it is. But I guarantee you it is worth the wait. So that that's about it for us. Sonic, uh, Dabu, you have anything to add before we log off for the night? Uh, absolutely not. You just need to turn in for our 100 casts. It, you can miss all the other 99 ones, but you have to see the 100th one. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, the 100th we've casts. Been, we've been planning it for months, and it's just, you won't believe what's going to come tomorrow. We are so excited to bring it to you. And uh, actually, we're going to sign off this and get right to work on that. So we will see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like and share the video to your friends, family, everybody you know. Thank you for watching. Yeah, all the Discord you're a part of, share it there too.